Welcome back to 40 TV with your host, 40. What's up, y'all? It's been a little while, but I'm back bringing you some new content. Today, uh, we're going to give a tutorial on uh, Ableton Live's looper effect uh, that ships with Ableton 8. We've been uh, making some changes and uh, I've decided to refocus on uh, 40 TV. 40 TV dot com actually has recently been redone you can check it out get an idea what's to come in the future um, we're going to be offering all types of tutorials not just audio tutorials uh, graphics as well as video um, so definitely stay tuned for that right now today we're going to go over uh, Ableton Live's uh, looper effect that ships with um, Ableton Live Suite 8 um, right now I have it loaded into audio track 1 in the first clip I have is a track that I released a few years back called Snake Charmer, available on iTunes as well as Beatport. A uh, little plug for me, you know. Anyways, let me just give you a quick preview. Okay, so that's playing on track one. We have Looper loaded into track two. In audio two, I have basically just copies of this clip. Um, set with some loop regions, uh, if you will, hot cue points, just so we can play something in conjunction with the looper um, once we have actually looped something. So before going into uh, what the different parameters of the looper are, I'm going to actually just go ahead and uh, record a sample into it. To do so, we, w we need something playing here on audio track one. This could obviously be a, a Wave MP3 if you're in a DJ setup like myself. Um, real quick, if you're wondering why there's a red box surrounding audio track 1, 2, as well as the master, uh, that's because I have an Akai MP, uh, APC40 excuse me, uh, connected as my MIDI controller to Ableton Live, um, and that delineates uh, what tracks it's currently controlling. Uh, it can control your uh, devices and effects as well, but uh, we can get into that in another tutorial if there's enough feedback requesting it. Um, otherwise, so... Um, Let's keep moving. So in order for Looper to actually sample something, it can be a vocal. If uh, if I had through my input right now, the mic connected to the input, I could be recording me beatboxing, talking, et cetera, et cetera. It has the ability to act like um, a loop pedal, continually overdub, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to find a particular portion of this track. I'm going to click here on the sample view. I'm going to jump somewhere in the track and we're going to grab a sample from there. So here we go. So as you can see, I clicked on the record button. Now I could have done that down here. Initially, this is a multi-purpose button. There was a record button. By default, I click on this because this is what I have mapped to my MIDI controller right now. I'll explain what I have mapped in a second. Um, once you click for it to record, it's going to record depending on the amount of time you have it set to record to. Currently, that's set to one bar as you can see here. It can be set to X bars slash variable length, so it can record for as long as I want it to. Unfortunately, this parameter cannot be mapped via, uh, via MIDI. Excuse me. I'm going to switch it back to one bar. We currently have a one bar loop here recorded from our clip up above. This is what it does after it records that. I have it set to jump into play mode. I could have it set to jump into overdub mode, but I, I prefer the play mode. Again, if I want to overdub, I can always click on the overdub button here in the looper's transport controls. The looper's transport controls are separate from Ableton Live's transport controls. Um, however, you can tell the plugin um, down here under song control what you want looper to do. Right now, it's set to start, start the song. So if I click on play here on the multi-purpose multi button or play right here, it's going to start Ableton Live Transport so we can actually hear something. I'll go ahead and do that. After pressing stop up here in the transport, it stops playback. Right now, the BPM is set to 127, which, which is the global BPM for our track. However, tempo can be controlled by the looper. So if I was recording, um, let's say I was beatboxing, which I'm not even going to attempt to do, but let's say I was, then I could tell it that I want looper to change 
um, to set and follow the song's tempo, or I can set it to none. If I set it to none, then Looper is going to decide what the tempo based on the recorded uh, material is and set Live's tempo um, to match. I set it to follow the song tempo because it's currently set up in a DJ situation. I do have an undo button here, so if I do overdub and the next layer that I add to this looper um, and I overdub on top of it doesn't sound good to me, I could always undo it. I can clear the samples, all of the samples um, from the looper by cl pressing clear. Uh, to the right, right here, I have speed adjustments to this particular loop. I'll go ahead and play the sample and make adjustments. The up and down arrows are to go up and down by uh, one octave intervals, whereas the speed adjustment does it in a much finer sense, um, tones and semitones. I can also reverse the sample by clicking here, and let me go ahead and let you see here with how that sounds. Obviously, you can have a lot of fun with that. Any parameter inside of Ableton that needs to be reset to its default value just needs to be highlighted and then press delete on your keyboard. To the right over here, you have your feedback and your input and output. Um, what this is controlling is what is being heard, what's coming into the plugin, which would be this clip above here, and then what is being output from the plugin. Right now, I have it set to record, overdub, and stop. What that is telling uh, Looper to do is that when we record some sample inside of the Looper, stop the playback of the clip or whatever's coming into this track and then just play the Looper. You could have this set um, to always never or record over and then still hear what's, being, what's coming into the track, whether it's a clip, whether it's your microphone audio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let me show you also right here by changing the lengths, halving them and multiplying them can do. And then I'll explain the drag me button. So this right here can half a loop or times two a loop. But the problem is once we half the loop, if we half it once, we can click undo. If we half it twice, we cannot undo to get back to this value here. Let me show you what I mean. So I did it once and pressed undo and got us back to our original state. This time I'm going to press it twice and watch, we will not be able to get back to our original state. So now you notice that this is a half bar, two beats um, being played. We cannot get back to the full bar. There is only one undo. We can redo to go back to the last change that we made or undo one time. So that's kind of unfortunate. And if we do click times two here, it's gonna multiply this, but it's only gonna use that two bar portion to be played twice to create a full bar. So it's not gonna be actually what we brought in here. Um, this drag me button right here is once we're happy with what we have here, let's say we like this. So I wanna take this and drag this up here to be a proper audio, audio clip. If we double click on it, we can see that it has brought the audio from this particular sample into its own audio clip. Um, I can then go back over here to the looper, make sure it's off, trigger this audio clip. And it's set to loop just like it was in the looper. And now I can uh, create other loops, etc. We can also have something else playing here. Um, so let's go back in here. We'll clear this particular loop that's inside the looper. We'll go back in. We'll sample another loop. We'll trigger another track and see how that sounds. So 
as you can see, both here, this bells, which is just a hot point or cue point in a different portion of this track, is being played in time with the looper happening on track number one. Obviously, the possibilities are endless. Um, I'll show you one other cool thing. With this stuff being currently mapped to my APC-40, I can go ahead and trigger the loop, I, and I can play with the speed, and then stop this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play audio clip one. And while audio clip one is playing, uh, I'm going to make sure that the loop is playing, the looper is playing as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and adjust the speed, see if I can make it do something cool, and then stop it in a point so that it will pl start playing this clip. Um, Probably is going to sound interesting. Let's see. So all I did was increase the speed by three octaves after doing so, when it got high enough, I went ahead and turned the loop off because the stop point is automated on my APC. Then it jumped back to the clip that was currently playing wherever it was within that clip while it was playing. All right, if you have any questions, man, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Uh, shoot me a message on 40tv.com. Um, please comment, rate, subscribe, uh, share the videos with your friends. If you guys have any uh, other desired tutorials that you'd like to see me release, please let me know. Uh, I plan on releasing something about Isotopes Ozone 5 in the next month or so. I have the plugin. I've gotten pretty good at it, so uh, look for that. Um, I'm going to throw out a few more effects uh, uh, videos shortly as well. So, uh, yeah, thanks, guys. See ya.